Good morning, Daybreak Legends. I am your host, Matt Olin. And you know, this might as well be the summer of 69 because this morning's event is the 69th consecutive Creative Mornings Charlotte event. Wow, what a ride it's been so far. Okay, <clears throat> we have a lot planned for you this morning. We have some more music, we have some more creativity, some connections, some inspiration, some fun. But first, let's cover a few housekeeping items. First and most importantly, be sure you choose speaker view, not gallery view. You should see that option in the top right corner of your Zoom screen. That's gonna allow you to best see the person who is speaking or performing at any given time. Secondly, everyone is muted by default, so please do keep yourself muted. It's gonna keep the audio as clear as possible for us. That said, we'd love for you to turn your camera on by clicking start video so we can see all of your beautiful faces and you can interact with us and show your love this morning uh, for the performers and the speakers using the chat function or the reaction icons both found at the bottom of your screen. And finally, if your mug finds itself empty, please refill your own mug before assisting others, okay? Gotta look out for number one. All right, folks, our global theme this month is home, which was chosen by our Kansas City chapter. Home, which is a really complex word these days, I think, right? We've all spent extraordinary amounts of time at home during stretches of the past year and a half. And we've become more present actually to just how many of our neighbors are in need of a home too. That was especially, especially true here in Charlotte. Um, and so I think this concept of home can be really elusive sometimes. Home can be a place that we belong. Home can be found among the people that we love. It can be carried with us wherever we go. And a lot of us are out there on the go this summer. And so many of us are working hard to make sure Charlotte serves as a nurturing, creative home for artists and creatives of all kinds, where the conditions exist for you to be able to create whatever you want and find su sustainable success doing it. So as we present the program this morning, and as you meet all of these amazing creative Charlotteans, listen for hints as to what home means to them. And along the way, I invite you to ask yourself, what home have you built for yourself? And, and what can we do to build a home for each other? So our friend, Monica Carney Holmes, who's the manager of the Urban Design Center at the City of Charlotte, she's also gonna get us thinking about home as well in a little while. And Monica works hard every day to keep our city feeling like home for all who live here by designing projects, amazing creative projects like Open Street 704, Corridors of Opportunity, Gulf Porch, the Black Lives Matter mural, so many amazing projects that are in her wake and that are coming forward as well. So folks, we have a lot to pack in this morning over the next hour or so. But first, we do have a manifesto. As you know, we have a manifesto here at Creative Mornings. It's our North Star. And in the midst of so much uncertainty these days, it keeps us grounded, it keeps us focused. And it reminds us why we gather together every month. So this morning, I'd like to invite our friend and Monica's fellow City of Charlotte colleague, Federico Rios, to join us. He is the Assistant Director at the Office of Equity, Mobility, and Immigrant Immigration for the city. And he's gonna read our manifesto aloud for all of us to hear. Good morning, uh, Federico, how are you doing this morning? Good morning, sir, I'm doing well. Excited to be here with you. I'm so glad you're with us too. Thank you so much for carving out a little time to do this. And we do like to read our manifesto in multiple languages each month as a reminder that Charlotte is a home for people from all over the world. And so would you do us the honor of reading our manifesto in both English and Spanish for us this morning. Absolutely, thank you again. Everyone is creative. A creative life requires bravery and action, honesty and hard work. We are here to support you, celebrate with you, encourage you to make the things you love. We believe in the power of community. We believe in giving a damn. We believe in face-to-face -face connections, in learning from others, in hugs and high fives. We bring together people who are driven by passion and purpose, confident that they will inspire one another and inspire change in neighborhoods and cities around the world. Everyone is welcome. So I'm gonna move over to Spanish now. And uh, though it is my first language, it is not the language I was educated in. So anyone out there that uh, speaks Spanish as their first language, please do not uh, overly correct me and show me some grace. Todos somos creativos. Una vida creativa requiere valencia y acción, honestidad y trabajo duro. Estamos aquí para apoyarte, celebrar contigo y animarte a hacer las cosas que amas. 
Creemos en el poder de la comunidad. Creemos en involucrarnos. Creemos en las conexiones cara a cara. En aprender de los demás. En abrazar y chocar los cinco. Conectamos a personas que se mueven por pasión y propósito. Seguros de que se inspiran unos a otras. Inspiran al cambio de en comunidades y ciudades alrededor del mundo. Tomo, todos son bienvenidos. Oh, thank you so much, Federico. Federico, thank you so much for what you do every day for our fellow neighbors who call Charlotte home. And it was just beautiful to hear both of those languages this morning. So thanks again for doing that for us. Thank you, sir. All right, let's bring my creative partner in crime, Tim Miner, up to the Zoom mic. Tim, how are you doing this morning? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling on vacation, having a leisurely creative morning. Well, you know, it, it's, it was occurring to me that the theme of home is slightly ironic this morning because you're not even at home this week, are you? Where are you? Uh, I'm on St. Helena Island in South Carolina. So, but all right. And while Charlotte is always will always be my home, this hammock, it may need to come back home with me. <laughs> Doing pretty good right now. All right, your your secret is safe safe with us. It's not as easy as stealing like a little shampoo bottle from the hotel room, but you know, do what you got to do, man. I feel like I'm up to the task. <laughs> you know, so you're not home. Our team member Melissa Dorsch isn't home. Our co MC Michelle Gabadia is traveling this week too. Some of you are probably joining us fr from your vacations. No one is home in the Queen City this week. So of course we're going to explore home. As a I carry it right here. I carry Charlotte in my heart, man. Wherever That's I right. go. That's right. Well, look, that is not going to stop us from thanking our amazing sponsors. No, sir. Because we wait, a <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's not the deal. I thought if I was out of town, we didn't have to do the sponsor. No, sign. no, I'm I sorry. We would... wouldn't be here without their ongoing support. So there's no getting around it. And I do have to say before we, uh, before we assault our attendees ears that this is our second attempt at Lizzo. We tried Lizzo, good as hell, like, I don't know, earlier this year. For some reason, we decided we're going we're gonna to give it another go. So I don't know. Forewarned is forearmed, I guess. I, um, I just, uh, yeah, I think that you and I are the kind of people that have to stick our hands on the stove a few times to find out if it's hot. All right, look, you just relax in the hammock, breathe deep, and in gratitude for our sponsors' enduring generosity, let's juice it up for our sponsors this morning. Steve, dare I say, roll the tape. You're the best, been with us for 11 years. Ooh, baby. Help your business pass the test, eliminate your email fears. Ooh, baby. They're a global partner, y'all, helping out the whole world through. Ooh, baby. There are others I recall, local sponsors, we love you too. We gotta thank your intentions, Java, build up to my eyes. Yeah, we drank. Chevron's vittles, they go straight down to my thighs. Like a tank. Charlotte's Star Room, artists love to amplify. Let it crank. Think our sponsors aren't the baddest yet. Thankfully, you're Usher, good mama. Put it to good use, gonna put it to good use. 
Wow. Wow. I... I'm sorry? My... I have to go on another vacation to get over the song. <laughs> I won't be back for another week. Okay. Folks. Let's stop with the Lizzo before the, uh, before the cease and desist. We're done letter. with Lizzo before we get a cease and desist. Um, okay. I mean, yeah, we're wow. done with Lizzo. Okay, folks, we love our sponsors. We love our local sponsors. Method, formerly known as Skookum, WFAE, Charlotte Star Room, Blango, Pure Intentions Coffee, and Community Culinary School of Charlotte. I also want to take a moment to send some extra special love to our global sponsors, MailChimp and Skillshare. They support the Creative Mornings global community, 223 volunteer-run chapters all around the world. So thank you to MailChimp, who wants you to know about the Courier's Fresh Fund program, supporting Black founders, dreamers, and makers in the U.S. and the U.K., looking to get the thing they love off the ground. We're talking $150,000 in cash grants, plus mentorship from experienced business owners, Applications are open at couriermedia.com backslash fresh fund backslash about. And we can drop that uh, to you in the chat as well. And thank you to Skillshare who invite you to claim the truth of who you are. Skillshare collaborated with author and recording artist, Justin Michael Williams to create a toolkit for radical authenticity that will help you unlock your most joyful and truest self. Learn how to embrace what you usually hide and celebrate the ways you've been radically, unapologetically yourself. Download the toolkit at Skillshare.com forward slash blog. I know, I know I said backslash in the last one. It's forward slash, isn't it, Tim? Man. All right, folks. If you've been with us for 69 events straight, like my mom and my dad have, I love you, mom and dad. Then you know that our one of our favorite traditions is to invite a Charlotte musician to play live for us. And this morning is no exception. If you've really been with us for a while, you'll know that for a long while, our house band was the one and only Revelwood Mission with frontman Gray Brewster. And he's my dear friend, and he's going to be your morning musical muse this morning. Good, good morning, Gray. How are you doing? Um, Gray, we have done irreparable I... damage to the time-space continuum uh, <laughs> with that song. We are going to need you to really, really step it up to keep the world from exploding. All right. You can hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. We can hear okay. you loud and clear. All right. Well, cool. Thank you for having me, Matt and Tim. I'm glad to be back. Um, and uh, great to see everyone else here this morning. Harvey sounded amazing on the sax. And yeah, that goes with coffee like every day. Every so. single day. Now, listen, before you, you, uh, you play your song, two mm -hmm. quick things. You have a new release out soon. Is this yeah. true? Yeah, it's uh, our third release. It's called Three. It is uh, coming out early August. And um, beyond that, we are also working on the next record, which would be great. Um, we've done some cool live streams uh, throughout the pandemic. And um, uh, we actually have a show this evening out at the Whitewater Center uh, for River Jam. We're starting at uh, 7 p.m. So, uh, and, and there have been loads of people coming out for these things because it's outdoors. I think it's a free event. I mean, you pay for parking, uh, but it uh, should be a really, really great time. We'll be starting at seven o'clock. Come on out uh, to see us at the Whitewater Center tonight. Dude, you guys are just probably my favorite band in Charlotte. I, I love uh, it. I got a little you. taste at, uh, at the Beatles tribute uh, uh, festival that, uh, that you played for the Tosco music at last week. And so it's so exciting that you're playing tonight out at Whitewater Center. I hope uh, a bunch of people go out and see you tonight. Yeah. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, here to play a song for us on the Charlotte Star Room music stage, please put your hands together and get your tips ready for one of my favorite musicians of all time, Gray Brewster. Thanks, man. Um. Touch is all that I need. If I could feel you just a nice and tender, I guess you see what I mean. And I mean, and I mean, one who could wait for you, you know it's true. You don't have to run. Be your way this time. Cause I 
Thanks for having me. Gray, welcome back, man. That was that was awesome. I mean, I, I feel cleansed after <laughs> after listening to that music. Uh, so man, do I. The, we we can't have you be a stranger. It was too. It's been too long. It was great to hear you. Yeah, I'd love morning. to see you guys. Uh, Thanks again. Well, you tell tell Allison we said hey and, and I will hang on, man, because there's more to come in this morning. Yeah. Have a great show tonight. Thanks, guys. Well, Matt, it looks like it's about that time again. Indeed. Time to, time to seed creativity across Charlotte with a few hugs and some bucks and a lot of love. So Let's do it. Guys, if you've been part of Creative Mornings for any amount of time, you know how we feel about things. You know that, that we like to start little fires all over Charlotte uh, and that we believe that creatives and creativity need a lot of things, but they need money. They need encouragement. And more importantly, they need that opportunity to try things and fail and learn from it and get up and move forward. You know, we want to make Charlotte, all of us, a town that you don't have to have made it already in order to make it. And sometimes just the littlest nudge gets the biggest, boldest idea out into the world. And so for the last three years, sponsors um, of Charlotte's Creative have been able to help us give hugs. Those are helpful unfettered gifts in $250 increments. Just a little bit of money to help get an idea from out from in here to out into the world. And so this month with the uh, help of our exceptional hug sponsors, Google Fiber and Noda Brewing, we are able to give out five $250 hugs. And those are going to a wide array of projects. Uh, one is going to L Wash, I mean L Wash, L, L Wash, well, I can't say it. I'm on vacation. My tongue doesn't work anymore. L Walsh, like 90210. She's CLT chalk art. She is buying chalk to give to, to kids that are going to be in programs about chalk drawing that she does this summer. Um, Zach Setawong is getting $250 to buy supplies for his YouTube channel on making things and making mistakes. Kaylin Devon is getting is using hers to buy supplies for an exhibition that she's got coming up at Black Market Charlotte. That ability to 
five things you need to take yourself to that next level is what the hugs are all about. Craig Stevens is, this is a beautiful use, Matt. He is putting that $250 towards establishing an LLC for his new hand lettering, hand sign and mural business. And Corin Cooper um, is using her for a, hers for a beautiful reason too, to pay photographers and videographers for a new documentary she's doing, trying to encourage uh, the black community to avail themselves of mental health, a challenge that she sees out into the world. And so we have given over the course of time with your help, everybody out there and our sponsors, almost uh, or right at 300 hugs. Some of these projects started and they went one time and never went forward, but many of them are still at work in Charlotte. And to that end, last year, we were able to start a pilot program, something we just had no expectation that was going to continue it was with funds that we got from CARES Act dollars um, and from the COVID relief fund. And that was the bear hugs. These were thousand dollar hugs that could be awarded to previous hug grantees. That next step, right? I've done something cool with my 250. Where do I go now? Thousand dollar hug. We've given out a number of them, but there was no hope that it was going to keep going. Now there's hope. I can tell you guys this morning that bear hugs, these thousand dollar hugs are going to go on indefinitely thanks to a new partnership that we have with the Lending Tree Foundation. We are so excited, Charlotte Scrave, to be a part of the inaugural cohort of 10 nonprofits that are going to get a three, have gotten a three year commitment from Lending Tree Foundation to go do amazing things in Charlotte, to work together, to model collaboration, and to take what we know and to assist people across the city. And so today we are awarding four bear hugs to incredible huggies that you guys know. There's Jessica Moss with the roll up. This is a artist in residence embedded program that's in Camp Green. We've given them a hug. Uh, I think her first one was two years ago. She is getting a thousand dollar hug to rebuild her website, to expand the knowledge and the impact of her program. Winston Robinson, who was the very last speaker to speak at Creative Mornings before in real life, before we had to go to Zoom, he is getting $1,000 to take his idea of Vibe Called Fresh, which is an outdoor festival devoted to getting people to learn about home ownership that has, has encouraged over 30 people to engage in buying a home for the first time in not only their life, but in their family's life. He's getting $1,000 to establish a Vibe Outside which is smaller programs that are COVID friendly going July through September. Bay Hart, our beautiful photographer friend, is using her $1,000 bear hug to prepare dancers that she works with for a showcase for the Civil Arts Society. And finally, Ladara McKinnon, a amazingly talented visual artist uh, with Ladara Fine Art. She is painting a mural at Chasers, which is an LGBTQ plus uh, social club a club that has meant a great deal to people in Charlotte for decades. She is gonna paint a beautiful mural for them. You can see here in the picture, this is an outdoor kind of test that she did. She's gonna do a larger one with her bear hug. And this is all possible because of this incredible donation, this incredible trust and faith put in the hug grant program by the Lending Tree Foundation. And that's, that's not it. They wanna help us take the hugs into a huge continuum of other projects. So you had heard earlier this year that now every four months, HUG grantees can apply for a four month stint of, of studio space at the McCall Center. Now, every month, every month, we can give a different creative a $10,000 credit at the Charlotte Tool Bank. And if you don't know about the Tool Bank, you need to go check it out right now. Maureen Kruger and her team have put themselves to the service of nonprofits across this city. You can go to the Tool Bank and rent tools, tables, chairs, anything you need to do construction or to put on an event, they've got, and they rent it to you at a fraction of a cost. So that $10,000 will go a very long way to the people that apply. You can start, if you are a previous hug grantee or you've never gotten a hug before, you can start applying on August 1st for that, the new Charlotte Tool Bank hug grant. Now, all of that is thanks to the Lending Tree Foundation, and that's just the beginning. We're going to keep on going, impacting Charlotte. They believe in us. We believe in them and the nine other people in the cohort. Cannot wait to see where we go from here. I so mean, Matt, 
not well, not, I just, too, not too shabby. I, I just have to say what April and Chris and the, and the folks at Lenny Tree and Lenny Tree Foundation are doing. They're they're really disrupting the the corporate philanthropy game in Charlotte, and that is super exciting. And just to be a part of this initial uh, inaugural cohort, I mean. I, it's like it's like a dream, uh, and the impact that they're going to allow us to have on the community is just—it's everything we could have hoped for and more. So. Taking taking the the you know promo hat off, I think when we were talking to them, what really struck me the most is they asked us what our idea of entrepreneurship is, or to be an entrepreneur, and our immediate answer was just to start. You know, so many things yeah. keep us from moving forward, keep an idea from ever coming out to the world to sharing it, from fear to lack of resources. And from Lending Tree Foundation to Google Fiber to the McCall Center to Nota Brewing, those companies and individuals like you are investing in ideas. They are investing yep. in Charlotteans and their creative power and putting that to work in our community and it's doing amazing things. Well, you can see I'm wearing, I'm wearing my Lending Tree Foundation shirt this morning. I'm going to be wearing this thing until it disintegrates. So there you go. One last thing on that, too. One of the members of the cohort is our good friend. Um, Coach William McNeely with the Do Greater Coach. Foundation. And just to give you an idea of the hug grant in action, he received a, a hug grant for $250 to buy the very first iPad for his services. And now he has a facility he's working on camp in the Camp Green area in Shiloh Church. He's a member of this Lend a Hand uh, cohort. That little investment, you know, he came up with a spark of the idea right here at Creative Mornings years ago after his transplant. And so invest in people. And if you want to do that, if you want to apply for a hug or you want to invest in a creative charlatan, go to huggrant.com and you can do that right now. Not Hugh Grant, Hug Grant. Not Hugh Grant. It, you know, Hugh Grant. He he uh he didn't he didn't react well. We're, we're trying to get him to donate to the Hug Grant program. We, we haven't successfully made it to him yet. His people politely declined. I think we should all start to to maybe Twitter bomb him. Possibly. Let's 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 go through Andy McDowell. That may work. Okay, sounds good. All right. All right, what's next? All right. Well, I, what's next is, you know, we love introducing you guys, even if we're separated, even if we've got screens all over Charlotte, we will love introducing you to creatives all over Charlotte. And so it's time to speed date some creatives, Matt, is it not? So these are, time. these are 30 second videos, just to give you a little snippet of the depth and breadth and the individuals behind the cool stuff that you see all over the Queen City. So first up is our good friend, Kelly Stahl. Hello, Charlotte Creatives. I'm Kelly Stahl, transplanted from Chicagoland three years ago, where I owned and operated an immersive theater company. Well, I want to do it again. And me and a handful of very talented actors are going to drop an immersive theater experience in my living room, aiming for February. I need your help. I need a piano. I need a stage manager and any sponsorship that can pay these professional actors. You can find me on social media here. Thank you, Tim and Matt. I love Creative Mornings. Can't wait to hear from you. I we love, love I love Kelly. Kelly, and I love that she's experimenting with bringing creatives into her home. I think she did uh, something really cool in her backyard recently, and now she's yeah. taking it indoors. So, she, awesome. you know, if, we've talked about this. Creative space is at a premium, and it's a little iffy still and dicey. With with we don't know exactly where we are with COVID. So Kelly has put her entire home at the use of and at the service of the of the uh, creative community. And she was also the one who encouraged us to really lean hard into tipping creatives and to making sure that we put Venmo up on. Uh, every time and that kind of stuff yeah. so we love kelly all right next up is a visual artist junior santos love this guy hi there hey, i'm agnaldo santos i'm from brazil i'm an architect i've been living here in charlotte for almost three years and i do art since i was four and i would like to share with you guys some art that i like to do i love photo i love architecture and i love show because every single square that is a beautiful art so thank you for he nice I, I am just getting to know him in fact we had a we had, uh, put up on on the uh, charlotte's creative instagram account a couple weeks ago who wants to go to a pizza party he was one of the people that, that actually showed up just to get random creatives knowing one another. Uh, a man of few words, but in insane talent. So check out the, the comments and follow him. He's incredible. All right, next up, time to move with Rumbau Dance. Hi, 
creative mornings. My name is Jennifer and I'm the co-owner and founder of Rumbao Latin Dance here in Charlotte. My partner Eduardo and I are professional Latin dance artists and we dedicate our lives to teaching, creating, performing, and organizing events surrounding the Afro-Latin dance art forms such as salsa, bachata, merengue, and cha-cha-cha. We believe that dance is for everyone and everyone is creative so we hope you can join us. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook and let us know if you have any questions. I love those guys. Boom. That's how you do a 30 second video, by the way. I got me excited is. and gave them the information at the end. I mean, it's I even. Saw, I saw you pulling out your Latin dance moves. So, yeah, I, clearly well, you did the. They're did about the as good as my singing skills, but I'm willing to dive in and do it. I mean, I this is, they make me want to break the Brandon Walsh rule of no dancing that I that I took up when 902 when I was on TV a year, many years ago, but uh, we'll see how that works out. All right. Next up is another visual artist that we're getting to know, Pam Singh incredible work beautiful human being i'm so thrilled we're meeting these people on instagram or they're hug grantees or hug uh uh applicants and just the depth of creativity in charlotte astonishes me so let's meet pam this is my creative space i'm pam singh a mixed media artist these are a few of my paintings i love to paint figurative animals and landscapes I love the use of colors in different ways. Mixed media is my kind of art. Ever since I was a kid, I was always passionate about art and creating new things. Creativity feeds my soul and I hope to touch many with it. I mean, visually beautiful and her voice is so calming. I feel like I could I know. like just sort of lull me off. You know, I just should have her record something. In a very zen, in a very <laughs> zen uh, headspace. And just, just the breath, I mean, it just astonishes me. Like you just, you don't even have to try in Charlotte. Just look a little bit and you're going to find people that you've never met before. Yep. And to that end, the last one is one of our $250 HUD grantees, Craig Stevens, who is a longtime illustrator. And as we said, is starting a, a hand lettering and sign uh, and hand uh, sign business. So Craig, let's hit it. This is one of my favorite things uh, is looking at process videos. And if, if you guys go to Instagram, especially Charlotte artists are really leaning hard into this. You know, I think so many people, you don't understand like what a creative does to go from point A to point Z. And Craig is one of those that really shares his craft. I would encourage you to check it out. He has a wide array of work and you can really see his hand in all of his, in all of his pieces. No need for audio. I mean, his process and his talent speak, speak for itself. So um, yeah, that guy, he, he's insanely talented. Absolutely. All right. Well, I encourage you guys, everybody out there, go speed date some creatives, get on social media and watch them. But if somebody intrigues you, don't worry about bothering them. Reach out, DM them, get to know them. And more importantly, hire them. Almost every single person that we showed a video of today, Matt and I, through our work and our nonprofit, have hired them to do work for us. Um, and, and wow companies or just put on an amazing show. So do that. And now, one last thing, because creatives inspire us all the time. It is that time of creative warnings that we are awarding a bolt of inspiration to a Charlotte creative whose insane talent and love of this city knocks us out and strikes us down and lifts us up. I'm going to turn it over to Tori from the Savage Way. Hey, Tori. Hi. What's, Morning, up? what's Tori. up? Creative mornings. Hello. Um, first of all, uh, the Lizzo cover was amazing. Okay. Let's not um, negate that. It was very entertaining. Thank you for that on this Friday morning. Okay. I'm Tori with the Savage Way and I'm here to pronounce uh, the pronounce, uh, announce the bolt of inspiration for July. So every month, thanks to Ortho Carolina, we are uh, recognizing inspirational creatives in our community and just really giving some love and recognition to people doing great work in Charlotte. So um, those that are new here, the Savage Way, we make moss art in both a corporate and residential realm. Our work is actually made from real plants. They're just preserved, so there's zero maintenance. So check us out on Instagram at the Savage Way, hit follow. Um, but for the month's uh, honoree, this bolt of inspiration is going to go to Brooke Brown. 
So Brooke is a local photographer that is highlighting our city's mural scene and helping these muralists along the way. So what started as her just simply walking, like a walking activity to see some of the cool art that's popping up around town, it's actually turned into a partnership where the artists are calling upon her to help like document this whole process. And it's just, it's awesome. So um, we love seeing creative synergy happen organically. So shout out to Brooke for being curious about Charlotte's art mural scene and supporting us creatives. Um, congratulations, Brooke, and back to y'all. Thank you so much, Tori. You announced it perfectly and you pronounced it perfectly too. So, you know, you're like, uh, you're, you're, you're crushing it this morning. And congrats again to Brooke. She couldn't be with us this morning because she's in Wisconsin visiting her family. See, another person not home while we're exploring home whatever, but we are so grateful for her and for how much she shares her amazing gifts with all of us. And speaking of gifts, the musical gifts are abundant and flowing today because it turns out that we are treating you to not just one, but two musical guests this morning. That's right. Right now we have Charlotte's own Chelsea Locklear stepping up to the virtual Charlotte Star Room music stage to play a song for us. Good morning, Chelsea. Good morning. It is so good to be with you guys today. Oh, you too. Thank you so much for, uh, for coming and doing this and playing the song for us. Um, can't wait to hear it. And friends, please be sure to tip Chelsea to show your gratitude for her playing for us this morning. And uh, Chelsea, take it away. Yes, sir. Well, since the, since the topic is home, um, music, music feels like home to a lot of people, I think. Um, but I know, I know for me, uh, a lot of my heart is involved. And when I think of home, I think of the heart. So hope you all appreciate this. This song is called From Me To You. And it's on Spotify and Apple Music and all the things. So here we go. Walking home late. A thousand thoughts on my mind. internal deep Match mine. I'm searching for lines to cross and to find you, but words won't quite do. Which hook should I use to start with the truth? Waiting patiently for I do. Oh, this song I'm sending. Oh, it's to you. 
Blessings coming our way this morning. Chelsea, thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. Just yeah, amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, Chelsea, that was incredible. Thank Beautiful. You. Yeah. Chelsea Locklear, everybody. Um, incredible. And please send her some cash love in the form of some Venmo tips. Come on, let's go. Find me on Instagram. Chelsea sings a lot. Come come party. Okay, come party. <laughs> we're up, we're up for the party. I, I love party. it. When you had when you had artistic talent and saleswomanship, like awesome. The one two for now. <laughs> Let's go. Come see it All live. Right. Thank you again so much, Chelsea. Now, Daybreak Legends, we have just one more thing to do before our main event of Monica Holmes, and that is right. It's time to win. And this morning's game is inspired by Monica Holmes' status as a unicorn, a true to life Charlotte native. Little Birdie told me that her parents are too. We're gonna I'll let her weigh in on this. So Dude, together, you asked, <laughs> what's that? Jump in that? You asked me to do her intro, and you look like with the top and this you have shared all the details i was going to give oh, i said she was a unicorn was it there, there must be more than the unicorn status I, i'll figure something out I'll figure all right out. you got like five minutes okay uh so look together we are going to play a unicorn themed trivia game on our phones so here's what you're going to do if you're like me your phone is probably right near you right I, mine's i sleep with mine it's under my pillow every night you're going to go to your phone, open up a browser, and go to menti.com, M-E-N-T-I, menti.com. And you're just going to type this four digit, this, sorry, this eight-digit code into the, um, into the field there, 44563818. You'll see that right at the top of your screen uh, as well, uh, that unicorn screen. So menti.com, there you go. Tim's already done it. Put in the, the eight-digit code, 44563818. You're going to see the, the code there at the top of your Zoom screen. And this is how you're going to play along with us, OK? It's through, through your phone. And you're going to be playing on behalf of another creative charlatan. I want to bring in MJ, the owner of the co-owner of Two Scoops Creamery, because this Sunday is National Ice Cream Day. So MJ's got to be our contestant, right? So uh, let's see if we can pull up MJ. Let's see if he's uh, in there somewhere. MJ, maybe raise your hand so our folks can, uh, so our stage manager folks can find you. Let's raise my hand here. There he is. How there he is. Good, man. How are you doing? Well, it was awesome. I was trying to connect. I was on my computer, and then all of a sudden, it just shut down. I don't know what happened, so I switched to my phone very fast. It's all good. You, you're, uh, you're, you're, the contingency plan is working, so this is all good. So, look, our audience is going to be playing along with you um, through their phones. And, and while they are going to menti.com and, and plugging in their code, let's hear a little bit about, um, about Two Scoops. You have... A fourth location opening opening up soon, right? Uh, that's correct. We've done our first license agreement uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina, uh, right off of Main Street, where uh, the new Common Market will be located. Uh, and so we did it with a wonderful family that we've known for a while, and uh, we'll be we're excited to be in that area in South Carolina. So it's just uh, just a fun time for the ice cream business for us. Well, it's awesome. It's just another Charlotte entrepreneurial success story, and you got a pretty amazing ranking recently too, as I recall. Yeah, it was it was amazing. We were I was driving, having a bad day actually, uh, coming from Columbia, South Carolina, and uh, I had a text come in from a buddy of mine about us being featured in the on the Today Show for being rated the number twenty nine uh, frozen products uh, services in the United States out of forty one places, and we were just stunned and amazed by it. And it was also funny because we didn't have a clue about it. <laughs> That that's that is incredible. I love what a, what a day that must have been. Having a bad day and suddenly today's show is 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 saying that, that you're one of the best uh, ice cream shops in the country. I love I love yeah, that. I find that ironic now because when I'm having a bad day, uh, or my family is, we head to Two Scoops to turn the day around. <laughs> that's right. So thank you, thank you. I love that. Uh, we, that's what we try to do. That's our whole goal is to make sure you know. When anyone has a bad day, just come get some ice cream. We're having a great day. Just get ice cream because it, it does bring joy. And, and we, we work really hard to put out the best product we can. And uh, thankfully, rewards are showing from that, too. Well, it shows. And if you go to the Plaza Midwood location, it's not just, a, you know, uh, gifts for the mouth. I mean, it's also a visual joy because our teammate, Sidney Duarte, did an incredible mural on the side of your building. And so there's just so much to see and, and, and uh, enjoy when, when they head to your uh, to your 
you know, to your, your plans of Midwood location and now to these other locations too. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Well, we're going to play this unicorn game. And uh, if you get most of these right, MJ is going to win an awesome prize. Okay. So don't let them down. <laughs> and when you select, when uh, this is really important, we're going to um, start doing the, the six questions. And when you select your answer on each question, make sure you hit submit at the bottom. So you're going to hit your answer and hit submit. Okay. So here we go, Tim, maybe take the rest of us off the screen, or sorry, Steve, maybe take the rest of us off the screen and just show the, uh, the unicorn uh, questions on the, on the slide. And the first question is this, what are unicorn horns made out of? Is it A, diamonds, B, alicorn, or C, bones from Price's chicken coop? Just go ahead and put in your answer and hit submit. And uh, in a moment here, if this platform works correctly for us, we should start seeing your answers come in. So we'll oh, see. Matt, too, too soon. Too soon with the prices comment. Is it too soon? I don't, I don't know. Maybe it is too soon. But uh, you, you, you know, let's just see if this platform is working here. I'm not seeing any, anything coming in. So I don't know. Maybe it's not working. Make sure after you hit your answer, you uh, put submit. You got to click submit in order for your question to come in. Chelsea's saying diamonds for sure. <laughs> Jumping in. Jumping in. So well, Matt, why don't we go ahead and at least move to the next. There we, we go. go. There now we they're go. coming in. Now they're coming in. Okay, so we got diamonds and alicorn and a little bit from Price's Chicken Oh, it's neck and neck. It's, it's neck and neck. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to plow through here. The answer is alicorn. So we're going to give this one to the crowd because, you know, I think uh, close enough. No, no, it's, actually, it's moved up. It actually is the winner. So alicorn is correct. All right. Number two, legend says unicorns dislike what type of person? A, liars, B, cheats, or C, whoever designed the Davidson Street exit ramp off of 277. Now we're flowing in. Now they're flowing in. So uh, it looks like liars is definitely taking, taking the lead here. Liars is taking the lead. That seems insurmountable. I think, and it's also correct. We're two for two here, folks, because the answer is liars. It's so looking good for you, MJ. That's right. It's looking good for you. Number uh, question number three: Which of these pop stars likes to dress up in a unicorn onesie? A. Miley Cyrus. B. Ariana Grande. Or C. Harvey Cummings. And the answer: I can't believe people aren't choosing Harvey for. There we go. Harvey's getting a few. I think I may have seen. This Harvey one's worth point. getting wrong. Everybody vote for Harvey. Because <laughs> then he has to start dressing up like a unicorn. That's right. That's right. So, you know, we were two for two, but unfortunately at this point, we're now two for three because the answer is Ariana Grande. Ari is the one that likes to oh. parade around a unicorn onesie. You know, maybe you Miley just, does it too from time to time. Did you just but. call her Ari like your pals? Yeah, yeah. I have a nine-year-old daughter. We, we listen to a lot of Ari. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, moving on to uh, question four. According to the Harry Potter books, what color is unicorn's blood? Is it A, silver, B, sky blue, sorry, A, sky blue, B, silver, or C, South Boulevard pink building pink? Let's see what folks say. It looks like folks are going for silver. And in the interest of time, we're moving on. That is an, also an insurmountable lead. The answer is indeed silver. Great, great work, everyone. Two more questions. What was the name of the toy unicorn in Toy Story 3? Was it A, Buttercup, B, Trixie, or C, Larkin? <laughs> Larkin's getting <laughs> some votes. Larkin's getting a few votes. <laughs> we got a little bit of Trixie going in. <laughs> oh. But you know, the answer is actually Buttercup, but it's okay. We're still ahead. There's still more Trixie, if, I, if I'm correct, Trixie was a triceratops, right? I believe so. Yes, yes. Yes. Chelsea's Final, nodding your head yes, so I'm taking that as the correct answer. Final question. What do you call a baby unicorn? Is it A, a sparkle, B, a uni, or C, a noda? This is the final question, folks. Don't let MJ down. And yes, it is clear you all know that a baby unicorn is called a sparkle. Congratulations, folks. You've only got two wrong. The rest you got right. And so that means that MJ is the winner of an awesome gift basket from our coffee sponsors at Pure Intentions Coffee, another killer Charlotte business. We should get the two scoop people together with, with the, with the, two, with the uh, Pure Intentions folks. I think so. I want a killer magic. Jamocha flavor, man. I, I, magic. I think that pairing's got to happen. Totally, totally. 
So everyone, thanks for playing. MJ, thanks for being here and congrats on all your success with Two Scoops. And thank you, Matt Yarmy and everyone at Pure Intentions Coffee. MJ, best of luck with the new opening. Thank you, and, so uh, much. Thank you. All right, man. And so Tim, uh, it is now time. Yeah. I know I, I stole the unicorn thunder, I'm sorry, but it's time to introduce <laughs> our, uh, our final segment here, which is our main event, Monica Holmes. So take it away. No, I was just joshing with you. There is no thunder stolen. You know, the, the challenge with Monica is not what, you know, what to say. It's, it's to, stop, to stop telling her story because she's, she's a remarkable person. She's somebody that you and I have been on our, particularly our creative journey with from the beginning, six years ago. Um, and so she's the perfect person, as Matt said, to speak about home. Not only is she from Charlotte, but she helps make Charlotte. You know, you, she's gonna pop up on the screen in a moment and you may not recognize her. You may not have seen her face before. You may not have heard her voice before. Her name might not be familiar. Her title might be Greek to you, but I promise you, you know her because you know her work. She's in your life. She helps to make Charlotte a place that you wanna live and that others feel comfortable with and that others see themselves in and feel at home. Everything that Matt said from street murals to Open Street 704 to Government Porch to the Black Lives Matter mural, you know, so many people were involved in that project and Monica was the unsung hero or heroine. It would not have happened without her. She's working for you whether you know her or not, but you can see her in the fabric of Charlotte. As the managing designer for the city's Urban Design Center, she leads a team of other people that feel the same way, that are passionate. You know, she, they don't just build cities and make rules. Through the projects like Corridors of Opportunity, which she's gonna talk about, they gather people together. They build support. They create consensus. They engage communities and support them and see them. Let them know that they are seen, recognized, felt, that they are important, that their feelings matter, that they are and you are part of the streets of this city, the heartbeat of this city. We look at what she does on paper and it looks like buildings and rules and zones and all of that is important, but it's about building and honoring community. You know, what really strikes me about Monica and then I'm gonna turn it over to her is that all of us are born somewhere, right? It may not actually be where we call home, I tend to think of home as a place that you choose to reside and choose, you choose to say, this is a part of me and I am a part of this. And what's amazing about Monica is that she was born here and then went away and did work in cities all over the United States and then chose to come back here and devote her life to making Charlotte a home, not only for she and her husband and her kids and her parents, but for all of us. And for doing the hard work, it's not easy to do what she does. Not everybody loves what she's up to every day. She takes that. She molds it. She applies it with passion and love and talent. And that, when you can find a place that you love and that you feel seen, felt, felt and, and heard and loved, that makes it home. And that's Monica Holmes. And that's why she's our speaker today. All right, Monica, I think I've said enough. It's time for you to talk. Wow, that was, uh, thank you. That was so nice. <laughs> so well, you I, know, you've inspired us for a long time. I love you. And now I'm going to shut up. Okay, well, the feeling's mutual. So you guys, I mean, just even being here today is like, you know, life dreams. So I'm very excited. Um, and I appreciate you guys, uh, the secrets out. Yes, I'm I'm from Charlotte. And everyone who knows me knows that, knows that and knows that it uh, informs a lot of what I do and a lot of uh, the work. So I'm going to talk a little bit today. You set the stage perfectly, Tim, uh, for kind of what I'm going to talk about today. And it's really uh, more of a personal journey and how that ties to the work I do every day uh, than kind of just about all the things that are going on, because I don't want to bore you with all the crazy things that are going on. So I have some pictures and slides that'll kind of help to tell my story. 
and I think we we can go ahead and get started, I think. So I'm going to start here with um, Name That Year in Charlotte, which this is, uh, if you don't recognize this, this is Charlotte in the year 1980 which is the year that I was born just outside of that left image uh, over at Presbyterian Hospital. And these two photos kind of represent what was going on in my family at that time. So my dad was uh, a full-time employee at the airport, which is on the right. And you can see it also looks unrecognizable. And uh, I was you know, born, came into the world, and this was my home. This was where uh, my family had kind of settled. We'd been here, um, my, both my parents were born here. And so we, we lived in this city and we were just, you know, this is what I knew growing up, right? So you can go to the next slide. And these were the places in which I lived and then where my parents were born. So I took a little version on Street View and went to go see uh, what, what each of our houses looked like in today's world. And what I realized is that in my mind, these places represented so much and so many stories and so much rich history. And then when I saw what they looked like today, like the top two were the two houses that I grew up for the majority of the time were near unrecognizable, right? So they were completely different from the way I remembered them. The way I remembered them was full of life, full of stories, full of celebrations, Thanksgivings, Christmases, uh, prom, parties. And I think the bottom two images, that's where the houses that my mom and my dad grew up in, I think they represent the same for them. When I hear them tell stories, you look at the house on the left and my mom, um, my mom really said uh, that she didn't, oh, I don't think that they're seeing the presentation, just a note. Anyways. Um, Oh, okay, other people are good. I need to turn off my chat. I was getting distracted. I apologize. Um, but the one on the left is that she never mentioned that it was small or seemed uh, tiny. She tells great rich stories of all of the celebrations and all the family that lived around her. And when I went and looked at it, it was clear to me that the two huge houses that you see on either other sides uh, that have been kind of recently constructed, they might swallow that little household, but that little house is full of so much rich history. So let's backtrack a little bit to what what where I kind of came from and um, a little bit more personal about my story. So you see the shells of these houses. Now let's tell a little bit about the stories of how I kind of got to where uh, I am. So, so this is a self portrait of uh, me from, I think I did it when I was about 14 years old. And you can see here, uh, I really had a passion for uh, creativity and drawing. I wasn't necessarily the best uh, artist in the world, um, really from a very young age. So I was completely inspired, ready to take my toolbox down there at my feet to go build what I thought was uh, the perfect building, the perfect city. And so I decided at a pretty young age that uh, Monica and Charlotte was gonna become an architect and I was gonna go out and build beautiful buildings um, all throughout you know, the world and be this world renowned architect. And what I thought those buildings might look like, you can go to the next slide, were this, this Frank Lloyd Wright, like beautiful set piece falling water. And you, you notice in buildings like this that there are no people in them. But in my mind, this is what, you know, if you liked to draw and you liked to do math, you became a set piece showpiece architect that really created these beautiful places in space. So no people ever in the photos, but look how pretty it is to look at. It's almost a piece of artwork that is a 3D piece of artwork, right? And I, so I went off to NC State, I go to the School of Design, I'm learning how to do this type of work. Um, I'm trying to figure out how does that reconcile with kind of my long history in Charlotte and my love of this place and the obvious uh, love that my family has had for this place. And I really, I just couldn't make it work, right? I was doing this work, I wasn't very successful in my classes, professors were kind of telling me like, you're not really on the right track, I don't know if this profession's for you, you might want to like try something else, like you're just barely skating by um, because this just didn't speak to me. I mean, wh where's, the, where's the story in this? Where, where is uh, the life? And then you can switch to the next one. And then I, I stumbled upon my last year of college. Um, I was on a trip to New York City and I was kind of just walking around. The person I was visiting lived in Brooklyn. And I stumbled upon uh, Dumbo down under the Manhattan Bridge 
um, overpass and it was like early 2000s and I stumbled upon uh, this place and all of a sudden I was like you know what I this is what I want to learn I want to learn about community and neighborhood and how community and neighborhood ties into building. And I don't want to create these set places. I want to figure out what places for people really look like and how you build them and how you design them and how you experience them. And so I started, uh, I, I was like, I'm too far in this process. I got to finish school. So finish school. Uh, and then I'm going to go to grad, graduate school to learn how to build community. So off I go onward to graduate school, finish graduate school. And I think, okay, I know everything there is to know. I can build the perfect community. I can design the perfect neighborhood. Um, and it's going to be amazing, right? So I'm lucky enough to land a job just out of uh, graduate school with what is considered um, the premier kind of architecture and design firm for city building. I'm going to the next slide. And that's that's called, it's called DPZ. Andreas Duani is the first person. That's the D. Elizabeth platter Zyberg, that's the second person. That's the PZ. And then Tom Lowe, who's the local partner, which some of you may know. He's a, he's a wonderful um, person and one of the most talented uh, community designers that I know. And so I'm like, this is my dream job. I have made it. I have really hit the jackpot. I'm going to learn from the people who have designed communities all over over the world, and I will know how to design this perfect place, this perfect community. And just to provide a little context, you can go to the next slide. When I say these people know how to design community, they actually started a whole new movement called um, New Urbanism, where they went around, and this is the first community they built um, in Seaside, Florida. And it was all around building communities and neighborhoods the way we built them for hundred, hundreds of years in the past. Everything is perfectly measured. Uh, the distance between the buildings makes a beautiful street and space. Every public space is the right dimension. It is modeled after generations of cities in Europe. You know the next slide. And the result is this beautiful set piece, right? It's a showpiece of a community. So instead of the Frank Lloyd Wright version of like a building in nature, this is the perfect showpiece of a neighborhood, right? It has every pavers in the right place, the trees are lined up perfectly, and it is what people really generally think of as perfection. But I will say, I'm going to go to the next slide, that this perfection had some drawbacks, right? So uh, funny, funny, um, funny thing is, is that it was so perfect and Seaside is so beautiful that it was actually called Sea Haven and used in the movie Truman Show as this false reality, this false uh, sense of kind of perfection of a community. And so I realized that... Um, starting to question as to what does that really mean in terms of Charlotte. So if you can design the perfect neighborhood and you can build the perfect uh, kind of set piece for a community, how does that apply to a city that has a long history and a long kind of story, right? And how does that apply to the people who live there? So while this was going on, um, and I was kind of just beginning to start thinking through these things, uh, it was interesting in that Tom Lowe, the person that I um, showed before who's who's local to here, I think was kind of questioning some of the thing, same things about Charlotte. So he started this whole, in 2008, I was working for him, I was working at DPZ, and he started this whole campaign um, around this question of Charlotte and what is Charlotte and how um, does perfection and Charlotte mash together. And you can go to the next slide. He started a whole conversation around keep Charlotte starched. So at, the, at that time, there was keep Austin weird. Um, and it was, I think, very clear at that moment in time that the energy in Charlotte was not around creativity. And although all of these things were happening underground and in various places in the city, um, really what was known about Charlotte was this banking center, this clean up town, um, the no, no trash on any streets. We don't have homeless people here. We are a city of perfection, right? And that was, that was the aesthetic that 
um, the city at that time was trying to kind of show to the world. So I was young, I was in my mid twenties and this was going on and I was like, oh, ha ha, isn't that funny? And I, I just kept working. To be honest, I just kept working. I kept traveling, kept doing work in other places. And I started to come back to that thought um, of what does that really mean? What does keeping Charlotte starched really mean? And if I, and I started to get a little bit involved in the community here and thinking to myself, if, if I want to have a great place and a place that I believe in for my children, then maybe I should take that keep Charlotte starch. And maybe if I, that's not the Charlotte that I want, maybe I should start figuring out how to change it from within. And so I had the opportunity in 2015, um, you can go to the next slide. I had the opportunity in 2015 to start building something. And what that was, was the Charlotte Urban Design Center. So I was able to really, um, I was basically given free reign. So myself and um, another colleague, uh, Grant, we started on the same day and we were basically told and introduced into the city as go do cool things, go figure out where you're useful and just go, go make, make things happen and work from within. Go build your brand within the city, go meet people and go figure out how we can um, go from a city of, um, a city of basically regulations as Tim mentioned and rules into a, a city and an organization of creativity and people building and storytelling. So you can go to the next slide. So I just started meeting people in the city, right? I just started uh, meeting um, other community members. And I really, the first project that started to really sing to that was this tiny project called No Barriers, which was a Knight Foundation project led by Sarah Hazel. Um, and it was a project that was all around breaking down barriers between communities. And so we started to kind of, um, I started to think how can design be applied to this project of breaking down walls between communities? And it started to think of like, well, maybe it's not so much about just the physical design of the space in the place. Maybe it's about the physical design of the space in the place through the stories of the community and through the stories of the people. So some of the things we did in that project were things like this, where we basically took a bridge that had been shut down for several years and hosted a community dinner between the two neighborhoods um, to have conversations and to really celebrate each other. And then we started, you can go to the next slide. We also figured out, you know what, people had stories that they were really interested in telling. And um, while we could design a million different things, the best way to do that was to hire creatives to tell that story for people and to bring them in at the beginning. So shout out to Daryl Gaston here, a wonderful um, human being. Um, but we started bringing in, this is Julio Gonzalez, another local artist, and we started to join them together and have them work together to tell those stories and to really start to reflect those stories immediately into the spaces and places that, the, that people called home. So you can go to the next story. So the next slide. So it wasn't just about kind of, oh, let's throw up some artwork. It was about how can we take um, the city's resources and the city's kind of firepower and really tell the stories of communities and neighbors and start to build that community together. So this ceiling, while it's simple and it just looks like words, was really a reflection of the community's story that was told through um, through art and through creativity. And every, one, every word that was up on that ceiling had meaning to the people who gave back. So no barriers, it was excess, it went great. We said, okay, what's next? How can we keep pushing the envelope and really incorporating um, this, this storytelling aspect and design and how can we continue to marry it up? And so the next challenge we really, we really took on was um, Eastland Mall and how, and Matt and Tim were instrumental in this, in this for the, um, the fun side of it. But we really started to say, okay, we did this in a park. It was, the park was already there. You know, the framework was already there. What if we literally just took a blank parking lot Okay, a blank parking lot that has nothing in it. All the buildings have been torn down. And we figure out how to tell people's stories through design and community building in this space for one day. So for one day only, we are gonna transform this place into the community center and the community heart that reflects all of the history of this area. And so 
we of course invited um, local creatives to help us out on this project. And we realized very quickly that the Eastland story was so much less about the perfection of the space and more about the reflection of the people's voices. So even in the artwork, you can see um, it was completely just at free will of what people wanted to show. So we had storytelling there, we did interviews. Um, and then the next day it transformed right back into a parking lot. So all of a sudden, all of the ideas about design that I, I thought I knew and how important all of the measurements and tree sets and building placement and all of the ratios that are you know, instrumental in the best urban design somehow became not important because for one day, you can go to the next slide, for one day in this place and in this space, it was really just all about the people and telling the story stories of, of their Charlotte and what their Charlotte looked like and what their Charlotte meant. And whereas if you compare this to the earlier slide I showed of um, falling water, you can see that the, live, the liveliness in this photo and the emotion that shows here is totally reflected in the voices and the people in the image and not the static kind of set piece. So next slide. So we, we have continued to kind of push this work and we are continuing to mention uh, corridors of opportunity. We took these really early lessons and we've started applying them to bigger and bigger projects. So this project right here was a, a public space. Um, um, it's still open. They actually had a thousand people at their movie night a couple of weeks ago. This is at Prosperity Village. It's the first public space that the city has built. Um, in over 25 years. And it's really completely a reflection of the neighborhood and the community around it. So the performances that happen here are um, brought to the table from the community and all of the energy that's there is from the people's voices. They were they co-created this project with our team. Um, two of my uh, teammates really led this project, Lorna and Aaron, and they did a fantastic job uh, helping the community realize their vision. And now it's completely owned by uh, Prosperity Village. So these projects have just continued to change that dynamic. And really, we've started to see how we can do that in more permanent things. We've started to realize that giving people tools, you can go to the next slide, giving people the tools that they need uh, to kind of realize their own uh, creativity and realize their own Charlotte is really all we needed to do. Uh, so we have we have a grant program that we run um, that really, this is one of our grant winners. And it's really how can we get tools in community members' hands to help them realize the Charlotte that they believe in and the Charlotte that they see. Because it's really not about creating the perfect place or the perfect neighborhood. It's really about giving people a voice and a seat at the table and the ability to create their own city. So you can go. So I'm gonna wrap up here with just a couple, um, a couple lessons learned uh, to kind of sum it all up is that I think in the end, my goal is for all of us to see ourselves as a city builder and see ourselves as lean into that, see ourselves as the people who can build Charlotte and that it's not really about um, it's not really about plans and documents and what's on the piece of paper. It's about how we put them into action. And we have to continue to keep doing that. So we have big projects on the horizons, projects where we're spending upwards of 20 quarters of opportunities, $25 million that we're going to spend on infrastructure, housing, and programs to make six different corridors more vibrant um, places. But really, it's the people's stories and the people's voices in those programs that's going to give them life and going to make them successful. So I ask of each of you all that you really lean into that as an idea and that you be present and stay creative on it uh, because this is our home. And if we don't all lean into it, then it's not going to reflect our stories in it. So one last slide. And I'm going to end with this quote. Um, and this is all of us so that we can all see ourselves in the creativity and in the city building. So last, last slide is that we're really there is no logic. This is a Jane Jacobs quote. For all of you that come from a planning, architecture, city building background, you know, Jane Jacobs is really like the, the godmother, the grandmother, the um, headmaster of all the great neighborhood building. And I just want to end this is a uh, quote from her from a Fortune magazine in the mid 1950s. And it's really all about we can't 
impose logic and order uh, onto our city. We have to believe in the people and have them make it. It's not buildings that we must fit our plans. So um, all the good work we do to make those plans, they're only again, they're only as good as the paper they're on. It's all about the people who make them. And so I'll end with just um, our theme for the Urban Design Center, which is People Make Cities. Uh, it's a takeoff on that. Um, we truly believe in it. And I just really, again, thank you all uh, for letting me be here today. Thank you, Matt, Tim, for inviting me. I love you guys um, and all the great work that you um, are doing here. And then I think if there's time, we'll do questions. If not, then. Um, thank you. Well, first of all, Monica, Thank you. The love is mutual. Um, so uh, just just thank you for spending some time with us, sharing your insights, your perspective uh, on this theme. And I don't, unfortunately, in the interest of time, we probably don't have time for Q&A today, but maybe we could do like a follow-up um, in the biscuit or something like that. But um, really just grateful for everything you do each and every day to make Charlotte home for all who live here, you know, and for embodying this sort of crucial concept that giving people and communities the tools and the resources that they need to build the home they desire, a, a home that's truly reflective of and sort of authentic to the people that call this city home. I mean, that's, that to me is very evolved leadership and it's truly creative thinking and, and you embody, you and your team embody that. So we're just grateful um, for that. Thank you, Monica. So and, much. Wait, and, and Monica, if you would, um, we have a question. Uh, in the chat, just if if you would share with everybody how they can get in touch with you, like how you, what's your preferred way? Yes, yes, I will put my email address. I'm typing it right now as we speak. But but as we do that, if if you want to hear, you know, we we weren't able to do the Q and A, but if you want to get to know Monica, if you want to contribute, if you want to help, guess what? The Urban Design Center routinely sends out calls for participation to quarters of opportunity planning, to other kinds of activities, to giving ideas, lending a hand. So the best thing you can do is follow them on, on social media uh, and answer those calls. It's sincere. I know we're all so somewhat jaded that like maybe the government really doesn't want to hear from us. They do. When Monica says, I want to hear from you, she does. When her team, Rachel and Charlotte and Lorna and Aaron and everybody else, they, they are some of the most giving creatives and they believe, let me tell you, no one in this city believes about the power of collaboration with the creative community like the placemaking team and the urban design center team does when they they are the first out of the gate to engage creative so monica i mean look we matt and i were just like concoct we had just started doing creative mornings when when we first started working with you we have been together on this journey and to see you this morning and share it with people has been a gift we we, we love you to death yeah, no, thank you guys. I mean, we, I can't wait to do more. Everybody, I put our um, Instagram handle too that you can also DM us and all that kind of stuff too. Yeah. Thank all you right. guys. Well, beginning of a relationship. Have a great uh, rest of the day. There you have it, folks. This is, unfortunately, this is where we must leave you this month. And we can't wait to see you next month. We're doing it on August 13th, the second Friday. Just because we're, you know, due to travels and vacations and stuff, we're kind of late in July here. So, we're moving the August uh, Creative Mornings to August 13th, the second Friday. Also stay tuned for an announcement, hopefully soon, about our Creative Mornings events getting back together in person soon. Fingers crossed, we're working on it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But for now, I wanna thank Harvey Cummings, Federico Rios, Tori Savage, MJ at Two Scoops, our musical guests, Chelsea Locklear and Gray Brewster. Go see his band, Revelwood Mission at the Whitewater Center tonight. And of course, our speaker this morning, Monica Holmes. Thanks again to our sponsors and to our Creative Mornings Charlotte volunteer team. And many thanks to each and every one of you for being with us this morning. And until next month, Harvey Cummings, can you serve us up another bite of breakfast brass to take us out? I'm headed to the Mahamic. Do it, Tim. Peace. <laughs>